can. I'm going to post the video over online. No. Please subscribe. Um, so, Don't subscribe to me. So this is what your, your report's going to look like. You're going to do three of these. So you're not going to do all ten of your chemicals. You're only going to do three. You're going to do numbers one, five, and ten. Okay? So what you want to do is you want to start by looking at the solubility profile of unknown number one. Okay, so let's say hypothetically that you have SSS for your solubility. What you would then do is you would write in all of the chemicals that are SSS. There are two possibilities for that. For SSS, there's like 15, right? There are some, like ISI, IIS, where there are like two, correct? So if you get one that's two, that's lovely. It's going to take you like four minutes to do this whole thing. If you get one of the longer ones, it'll take you longer, but that's fine. It'll kind of do it. You do need to write down every single one. They do need to be grouped. So for SSS, one anion is supposed to go first. So either nitrates or acetates or sulfates or phosphates, one of those goes first. All of your nitrates then need to be grouped together. And they need to be in order. So if you had had nitrates and then sulfates and then a chloride, and then none of these are SSS except for the nitrates, obviously. But, but if you had then snuck an extra nitrate you had forgotten to write down over here, that will lose a point. Okay? Then, you're going to write down the color. There are two different ways to write down color. There are some that are colorful, either blue or green. I would say green, yellow, blue, pink or red is fine for the cobalt ones. Chromium is either black, blue, or green, depending on how carefully you look at it. Uh, the ferrous cyanide is yellow. So if it's a color, you would write that here. Let's say mine is blue. If there is not color, that is not called clear, everything that's out is clear. That means you can see through it. Um, what you would then say is you would say colorless if there is no color to it. Okay? That would be my personal preference. For the color, the color will eliminate other colors. So if yours is blue, that means that it can't be pink, or it can't be yellow, or it can't be green. So if you had cobalt nitrate, there's a possibility, but that could be eliminated. You probably will not eliminate many of them. Then, for the acidic and basic, for the acidic and basic, if you have purple or blue, then that is going to be basic, and that's going to eliminate the four, four chemicals that are on the board over there. So nitric acid, hydrochloric, sulfuric, and acetic acid. If you're looking at something that is red or orange, that's acidic, uh, and then you're going to eliminate uh, the hydroxides, bicarbonates, and carbonates, then that's it. If you're green, or like blue-green or, or yellow, then you're neutral or really close to neutral. You won't eliminate anything. For the smell, there are three chemicals that smell, right? There's the sulfide, which smells like not good. Uh, there is the acetic acid, which smells like vinegar. And then there is the ammonia, the NH4OH, which smells like clean. Okay. So if you have one of those three odors, odors, you write that down. The only thing that gets eliminated by those are other odors, which depending on your solubility profile, will probably be zero, right? So NH4OH, I don't know which ones uh, off the top of my head they fit into. I think acetic acid and NH4OH might be in the same solubility. I don't know for sure. Uh, uh, but so sodium sulfide is in a completely different solubility. So if you have sodium sulfide smell, that won't eliminate anything. <coughs> if you have the cleaner smell, that would eliminate the acetic <coughs> acid. You're only going to eliminate other things that smell. We're not going to trust your nose enough at this point to say, this is what I definitely have. We'll follow through with the test. At the end of that, you may have eliminated zero. You may have eliminated maybe like five to 10, but probably not that many. Okay. Then you're going to rewrite all the possibilities that are left. Now, a lot of people will do this. They'll write C above. Maybe an arrow even, they'll get fancy. What I will then do is I'll take my red pen and I'll go, nope, you didn't write these 12 things. That's minus 12. Okay, please don't do that. Please take the time to rewrite everything every time. Some kids would do that every single time and then they would get like a bad grade on things. All right, let's let that be for a little bit. Then, you should be doing the first anion test should be your first grouping of anions. So if nitrates is first, you should run the nitrate test. Anytime you have ion on here, then you need to actually write down an ion. So nitrate is not NO3, it's NO3 with the negative charge. So all ions must have charges with them. The molecular formula is that's not the case. Okay. For the control, you need to write down which nitrate you used to compare to your unknown. So I picked up sodium nitrate, I ran a nitrate test, 
it formed a brown ring at the interface between the uh, ferrous sulfate mixture and the sulfuric acid. Then I did my unknown and I got a brown ring. And I was like, hello, that would be a nitrate. Okay? If your first test is correct, and that's what you have, then you would go down to the bottom, you would have a nitrate. Let's say you didn't get a brown ring. Then you would go into the second test. Now I did a sulfate test or a phosphate test or whatever. I ran a potassium phosphate, it did this, my unknown did this, it was it or it wasn't. You're going to do that until all the way down at the bottom, you get to the correct answer. And then when you get the correct answer, if it was number one and it was nitrate, then you would write down that your identified ion is the nitrate ion. If it wasn't, you would go until you got to whatever test confirmed it, and then you would stop and write that down. Something that some people do, they try to be overachievers, they're like, well, I got a nitrate test, but I still went on and did this other one just to make, no, don't put that in your report. We'll get marked down for that. You are wasting my chemicals, right? So don't advertise that. So I'll be like, you even like the earth? That's what I'll say, as I'm slashing you with red pens. Okay, then at that point, you will flip the page over, you'll go to the cation test, What's your most likely cation test to go first? Flame test, right? So like seven or eight cations are, are figured out using the flame test. Um, there's the aluminum, magnesium, and zinc one covers three cations, and most of the other ones only cover one thing, true? So you're probably doing the flame test first, maybe the aluminum, magnesium, zinc one, I don't know, but you would, whatever one should go first, go first. Uh, and then for the controls, if you're doing the flame test, you know, I ran NACL, uh, it looked this color, LICL, it looked this color, CuCl2, it looked this color. Uh, you would go through and look at, so I'm assuming chloride here is my anion, I guess. Now, if that didn't work, you would move on to the next test, keep going. Now, for the copper one, that's under the flame test, there is also a copper test. That one you can carry on. So if you got copper chloride uh, and it was green for your flame test and, and you got that to match and you're unknown <coughs> to copper, you can still do the copper test as a confirmation, something like that will be. At the end of that, you're going to write down your cation. Let's say it was the copper. Let's say your anion from before was the chloride. Then at the bottom, you would write the chemical formula. Okay, that would be what you would write. Now, the things that people do that make them lose points is that when they when they fill this out, that they they write ions without charges. And over the course of all the tests you've run for three different unknowns, that adds up to minus a lot. The second thing that people do that makes them do terribly is when they have the remaining possibilities, they get lazy and they start to write, it's the same as before, or it's the same as before except for these three. Don't ever do that. Write every single remaining possibility every single time. Okay? The third thing that happens is that people will write formulas incorrectly. So let's say for CuCl2, you wrote CuCl. That's incorrect. That's a different chemical. So, or some of them don't even exist. So I'm going to mark that wrong every time you write that. Now, if that's one of your solubilities for two of them, you might have read that formula eight times. That's minus eight out of nine. So, so things like that add up. So one tip I have for you, take your blue sheet or take a blue sheet or take someone really smart. Have them look through your chemicals and say, did I write these formulas incorrectly? Spend some time making sure that everything is written out really well. So I did the copper test. Make sure that you have the charge for the copper because it's a cation test. Okay. So as you're going through, make sure that all of your ions have charges, make sure that all of your formulas are written out correctly. Some things to help with that. On your other packet, it has every single chemical written out with the formula written out correctly. So if you look at your first packet, NaCl is in there, CuCl2 is in there. So all those formulas are on that list of 72. Um, some of you guys turning in your checklists. A lot of your checklists, I have to go ahead and mark because people are putting things like, oh, I had a... Uh, that's a bad example. What was the one I just had? Someone turned in and they said, I have KPO4. Okay, now I knew they were talking about potassium and phosphate. That should be K3PO4. So I put a little scribble to it. I'm like, did you mark me down? I'm like, no, but I will on your report. Your report needs to be well done. It should be very fancy. Okay, last year's class, a lot of kids did a lot of effort in here, got mostly the right answer. They got maybe 18 right out of 20 spent like six minutes throwing together a report and they ended up getting like a 50 out of 90 or 50 out of 80 or whatever. They got marked down huge on these. I don't think there's anything particularly complicated about what we've said so far, correct? This is pretty straightforward to most of you who have done the lab. 
there is some time commitment to having to write some of that stuff out over and over again. And a lot of people skimped on that and they got crushed. Don't waste four weeks by not writing out your stuff over and over again. It's really, really strong advice. The way this will get graded, this part will be out of 90 points. You'll start with 90. Every slash is minus one. Okay? You will probably not get 90 out of 90. So if you're anticipating, you're like, you know what, I got a 16 out of 20, but I'm really confident I'm gonna get 100% on this. I don't think any single person last year got 100% on that report. You're gonna make a mistake somewhere where you write the wrong thing. Um, little things, like, like some people will put the chlorides and then they'll put the bromides after a different group. Uh, mistakes get made, people forget a sign somewhere, people write a formula incorrectly. You're probably going to mess up something small somewhere. Okay. But it's definitely possible to get like 85 out of 90, 88 out of 90, okay. 82 out of 90. You should get a high score on this. Now, that is 90 of your points. You have 10 points for your equations. Those are ungraded in Zangle if you want to look away your grade list. I will add those two together, and then you'll get 100 points for, for how your actual chemicals turned out. You get 200 points. That does get curved, but the curve is not very much at the top. So if you get like 180 out of 200, oh man, that's a bad zero. If you get 180 out of 200, you might end up with like a, uh, it's a bad two, 182. Okay, so there's a very slight curve when you get a high score. Uh, as you move down though, if you get 100 out of 200, uh, I think that ends up being like a mid-level D, something like that. That says on the front of the packet. Um, so the curve becomes more substantial the more you deviate from the A and the B. And it can be very difficult to get an A on the quality. Okay, you kind of have to get your chemicals right, and you have to do a very clean report. Okay. Um, all right, what else? Questions? On the possibility sometimes we always have to have a section of the Yes, it should always be grouped by an anion. Uh, which on this page you only have one anion left, right? Um, something else that some people did is in the past they were like, like if you went to check day and you're really confident you had number eight right, number eight was you know NaCl, and then then you went back and retested after you got like a 12 out of 20 on check day, and you're like, oh wow, it's way off. It was uh, potassium ferrocyanide. A lot of people will kind of write this out like, here's all the tests I did to NaCl. Then I found out I was way wrong. So I redid all my tests and they added all this stuff. I, I would look at this more from the final perspective of here's what I did. Like, like almost kind of I would say, if you really screw up bad, this is not unscientific, but but you don't want to write out, like I don't want like a 10. If you were supposed to get chloride and, and you got negative results somehow for that and moved on and did four other tests, and you went back later and figured out it was a chloride, just stop it for it. Don't add in all of the incorrect stuff that you do. Madison? Maybe you already answered this in actual, but for the first 100 points, it's for the accuracy of what chemicals you get. So yeah, so it's, it's the 20, 20 ions, 5 points. Yeah. But if, say, you had three of your ions wrong, and that obviously carries over into reports, are you going to be marked Okay, that's a great question. I have two answers. So, so for example, <coughs> sodium and ammonium get mixed up a lot. Sodium <coughs> and potassium get mixed up a lot. What's the error in this? Uh, well, if you get sodium and it should have been ammonium, you saw an orange flame, which could be a contamination. That's a really simple explanation. I know what you did wrong. It's very, very obvious. Um, if, if you were supposed to get like copper chloride for your number one, and you have potassium ferrocyanide, that's going to carry over into your report, probably, because what were you doing? Like, what were you possibly doing that you had the wrong color, a completely different solubility, and you're just so far off, I can't even believe it. Like, how can you not know copper? That's such an easy test to do. So if you get sodium sulfide wrong and put silver nitrate, yeah, absolutely, that's gonna show up on here. Reasonable mistakes do not carry through, except in, uh, in what would typically get marked out. So no, uh, for, for usually, uh, and I would say this is rare. This is rare when someone makes such an egregious mistake that it would get like kind of, but yeah, I mean, if you're off by that, then there's going to be issues I'm gonna take with that. So. Yeah, and I, I would say of uh, 100 kids I had last year in class, they might have a voice. Okay, usually, 
usually a lot of people will make mistakes like this, or potassium and sodium are tough to distinguish at times. Um, acetates and nitrates can be tough to tell. There are some very reasonable things that people do wrong. If you're in the wrong solubility, um, and it's like way off, that, that's, that's when that kind of comes to play. Steven? So when you get your initial eliminations based on color uh, pH, how do you do that? So on the board is kind of what to eliminate when. That'll stay up there on that, that red thing underneath the schedule. Uh, so, so what I would say on that is you're not going to eliminate a lot usually for this. For colorful things, you're going to eliminate other colors that are not the same color as yours. Okay? For acids, you're going to eliminate the bases, which is hydroxides, bicarbonates, carbonates. For bases, you're going to eliminate the acids, which is all of the H whatevers, but not water. So do you just write the ion and No, so you would write out, yeah, so if it was always fine, if it was bases getting eliminated, you would write this eliminates KOH, eliminates uh, K2CO3, and it eliminates NaOH, or, or whatever the list was, those would all get removed from there. So that's how you would write that out. If you had an odor and it smelled like cleaner, let's say, and that's the uh, uh, <coughs> odor of uh, ammonia, and acetic acid was one of your options, you could eliminate then the acetic acid. Uh, this one in particular will have very few eliminations. A lot of you will eliminate none from this section. Um, if it's neutral, which a lot of them are, you won't eliminate anything because, because the pH is finicky for some of the chemicals. Um, and then for the color, again, a lot of them eliminate very few. Because it has to be in your solubility and it has to kind of mismatch what you have. It's going to smell like you know, 